Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled Neighbors Stole My License Plates. I work for a family as their nanny, basically they have a one year old that I watch all day and a six year old that I watch when he comes home from school. I make the kids food, I help clean, I do a little bit of everything. The parking in their area is kind of weird because although they live in houses they don't have a driveway or street parking. Instead there are a bunch of small parking lots for the residents. I don't want to have to take the bus or find street parking blocks away where the rules are different. Luckily they are able to buy a pass that I put on my windshield that lets security know that I am parking legally. This will be important later. After one day when the parents come home and I get ready to leave, I notice something very strange. There is a note on my car that I cannot park there and they know that I'm not a resident. The note continued to threaten to have me towed if I continued to park there and I think maybe they didn't notice my pass and make a mental note to display it better. I brush it off as a one time thing and honestly forgot about it. A few days later I leave the house again to find something even worse has happened. My license plates are missing off of my car, just fully gone. I go back to the house and tell them what happened to my car and the father comes out to look. He is extremely apologetic even though I know this is not his fault and he is nice enough to drive me back home and pay for me to take the train while he gets me new plates. It takes a few days and I have my new license plates and once again can use my car. I didn't think things would end there, but I tried to get back into my normal routine and think what happened was just a fluke. Three days later the same thing happens again and I already know that it is the same person and I have a strong feeling that they are also the person that left me that note. My bosses once again are apologetic and promise that they are going to get to the bottom of it. They once again replace my plates and set up hidden cameras to catch the thief in the act next time. Even though I knew that would mean another set of plates and a few more days taking the train, it seemed worth it to me. I wanted to find out who was so determined to steal my plates since it was only mine being stolen in a lot of about 8 cars. The family didn't seem happy this was happening to me either and they wanted to make things right. The next day I get to work and I do my normal thing. I honestly get so busy with the kids, I forget about the hidden cameras until I go out and once again see that I have no license plates. I go back inside and we all check the camera footage. We see a man stealing the plates and right away all three of us know who he is. It is the guy that lives next door. We are all both confused and furious because I have met him before and he clearly knows who I am so why is he stealing the plates and threatening to have my car towed is beyond any of us. Either way we sent the video to police and we ended up in court. We all gave our statements to what happened and finally got to listen to his side of the story. He claimed that he didn't know it was my car and didn't know that the parking passes were a thing and thought that I had just created it as a way to get free parking in their neighborhood. I couldn't tell if he was telling the truth or not but it was still illegal to have stolen the license plates. It turns out that apparently he did try and have me towed first only for the towing company to see my pass and claim that I was parked legally. Still he didn't believe it was legit and that is why he took matters into his own hands. I know many of you are thinking that I wanted this guy arrested for all the hassle that he put me through. Honestly though I just wanted to be parked where I'm supposed to and have my car left alone. I considered myself lucky that this neighbor was not crazy enough to cause actual damage to the car itself. I think the court felt the same way, that jail would have been way too harsh a punishment and instead everyone came to a pretty mutual agreement. He was going to have to pay $1000 in restitution that cost coming from what it cost to replace my plates 3 times and my train tickets. 
Also, apparently, tampering with license plates in this state is a misdemeanor and since it was his first offense, he got away with community service. He got hit with only about 50 hours and he ended up working in a soup kitchen. And by the way, Ripe Stars, I gotta say, I thought that tampering with license plates for some reason would somehow be similar to something like tampering with mailboxes, so I thought it would be something on a federal level. But I suppose that is not the case. Anyway, there was also the fact that he couldn't get in trouble with the courts for a year or he could face up to three years in jail. Also, he was told very directly to stay away from me and the family I worked for or we could call the cops on him. I was asked if I wanted an official restraining order but I declined because I really felt he learned his lesson and I didn't feel like I was in any danger if I happened to get within a certain distance with him. I worked right next door after all and I really loved working for that family so I didn't want to do anything to put that in jeopardy. Speaking of the family, I was amazed when they took the $1000 restitution they were given and ended up giving it to me a couple months later calling it a Christmas bonus. I was in tears from that and I ended up spending some of it to buy presents for the two children like any great nanny would do. I didn't have any family of my own so the one that I worked for really were the closest thing that I had. So the fact that they went to this length for me to help me with this problem really showed how much they cared for me as well. I still work at that house as a nanny to this day and I am so grateful that I do. I have seen neighbor a couple of times when I take the baby for a walk in her stroller. Whenever he sees me though, he quickly turns around and walks the other way to leave me alone. I don't hold any grudge towards him and honestly, one of these days I wanna ask him why he thought the parking pass was fake, but I don't wanna start a fight. And ripe stars, I'm curious, what would you have done if you found out that your neighbor stole your license plates over and over? I have to admit that is definitely a very strange crime to commit. And where I am from, driving around without a license plate is definitely a very bad and costly idea. Either way, if you have watched until here and enjoyed the stories about crazy neighbors, then please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, your help is very much appreciated. And the next one was posted by user Batlam City Limit on our own subreddit r slash ripe stories and it is titled Squatters from Hell. This happened over a decade ago, so some of the details might be a little off here and there. I live with my parents in the same house that I grew up in and that my parents bought just after they married. Next door to us was an old couple called Ted and his wife, who she asked everyone to call her nanny. Ted was kind but kept to himself and nanny was like a third grandma to me, my sister and the rest of the kids in the neighborhood. Sadly, time took Nanny from Ted and then not long after that, Ted's health deteriorated and he was put in a constant care retirement home by his daughter. The daughter wanting to sell the house to pay for the retirement home fees got a Polish builder to live in the house rent free and work on it with her only paying for the materials. Once the house was fixed up, the daughter would sell off the property. The builder was a nice bloke that worked a normal job as a builder during the week and would work on Ted's house over the weekend. The almost two years of hell happened when apparently the builder was out at his day job, some Eastern European squatters broke into the house and took over the place. When the builder came back, used his key to get in, he was jumped by the squatters and thrown out. The builder and Ted's daughter tried to get the police involved but squatters rights meant that they had difficulty in getting them out. As the assault on the builder was his word against them, there was nothing the police could do for him. Every time the council, Ted's daughter or the police tried to get them out, they barricaded themselves in the house. And by the way, ripe stars, I kind of have the feeling that in many European countries it is really difficult to get rid of squatters. Even more difficult than in the United States. Definitely a strange phenomenon if you ask me. Anyway, the squatters also broke into the back garden, backyard of Ted's former neighbors, us included, to get into the house from the back and damage the fence on multiple properties. In addition, they played loud Eastern European music from around 11pm until 6am the next day. 
The volume was so high that neighbors several doors down tried to complain. My dad was not retired back then and was on emergency call out for an environmental defense job. So having no sleep and then having to rush out in the early morning. Moreover, they also stole every piece of metal they could get their hands on, they cut metal fences from the nearby park, they even cut down parts of our local children's playground and stole manhole slash drain covers and cut down street signs to pay for alcohol and drugs. We even heard them occasionally drilling and cutting out the wires and pipes from the next door. The local council had to cut off the gas supply to the house as these guys cut out all the internal gas piping. Plus metal went missing from the back gardens, backyards of the other houses on the street they used to access the house from the back. Also they threw all their rubbish garbage out into the back garden and all the houses near them got mice infestations as our houses back onto a sports field and dog park. Also, they used our address and took out mobile phone contracts and then switching to another carrier when the bill got too much and their phone lines were cut off. They did this for every mobile carrier in the UK and it took us years to sort it out. We regularly got calls and letters from collection agencies and we had to prove to them that Eastern European man and Eastern European woman had never lived at this address and the phone carrier was scammed out of service. Once or twice we had bailiffs and county court sheriffs knock on our door to collect money from us and my dad had to prove to them that my family had been living there since the late 70s. Finally, after almost two years the squatters left as one of them was on the run from the police I believe and Ted's daughter got the house back. They had absolutely trashed the place and it was too much of a cost for her to repair and make any money on the property. So she sold it as is to a rental management company, the company fixed it up and costing them almost £100,000 in repair costs and rents it out for a year or two. They sold it when the house prices in my area rose sharply one year. And wow ripe stars I have to say that is probably the most horrific and terrible squatters from hell story we have ever heard about and honestly I feel so bad for OP for having to deal with these people. By the way though I am curious have you ever had to deal with squatters in real life or have any of your friends ever dealt with them? Please let us know about your experiences in the comments. The next one is titled Manager from Hell. So I used to work for a supermarket delivering people's shopping and two of my shifts fell into the evening. Both shifts were 7pm to 11pm and there were barely any deliveries between 10pm and 11pm if any at all. The manager of our department just used to let us go at 10pm unpaid or you could hang around and do odd jobs like tidying up etc. And then the new store manager showed up, what I can only assume was an attempt to stamp some authority down, anyone who was back from their deliveries early was made to work in the main part of the supermarket. Now a lot of the guys working on the evening deliveries were older gentlemen on part time just waiting for retirement who didn't want to be out dealing with the general public. So a plan was made, a very simple plan, just don't get back to the store until 10.45 by the time all the van unloading was done it was 11 and time to go. So most days there were about 10 drivers just sitting in vans for 1 or 2 hours getting paid to sit on their butts. Now these vans did have cameras and such in but could not be accessed by anyone in the store, could only be accessed by people out of the store if there was an accident for insurance stuff. All of this pissed the store manager off. On the evenings he was in he would wait and ask where we were when we got back. And we could basically say anything and he could not disprove it. One of my favorite encounters went like this. Boss. Your van was due back at 9.45, why are you back an hour late? Driver, traffic. Boss, where was this traffic? Driver, cannot remember. Boss, you expect me to believe you got stuck in traffic for an hour at 9pm at night? Driver, nope, walks off. This nonsense went on for about 3 months before he caved and we went back to the old system. 
Our department manager eventually told us this was because the cost of our department went up by around £2,000 a month in wages after we stopped going home early and his boss wondered why. And the next one is titled High School Teacher Douchebag. I went to high school in a small southeastern US town. During my junior year, 11th grade, I had a US history teacher who always acted like she was better than anyone else. She was the type that would always say things semi-jokingly about students which she thought were funny but came off as pretty mean and hurtful. Unfortunately, she was really popular with parents and the administration because to be fair, she was a good teacher and her students did well year after year on the AP exams. Taken to earn college credits if you got a high enough score, so she got away with insulting whomever she wanted to insult. Also, she was the type who bragged about being married to a professor, she actually had an affair with him when she was his student and he was married to his first wife, but I digress. At the time, I was dating a guy, also a junior, who happened to be the friendly neighborhood school drug dealer. This was the 80s, so pot and mushrooms were the go-to recreation, nothing too hard and looking back I think it was a far more innocent time. Our school was a notorious party school and set adjacent to the university dorms. The university was also a notorious party school as well as the town so it was known around the region as a party place. Most parents took it in stride because many of them were university employees or local business owners. Our teachers were pretty cool too for the most part. Many of them went to the same university so they knew the town and the local vibe. However, this teacher liked to talk crap about the party type kids, saying they would not amount to anything, end up in jail, die of overdose, etc. She was always picking on us, saying we were bad eggs and losers. One day though, grocery shopping with my mom, we saw her in the parking lot and she came over to speak to us. She started off by saying that I was doing poorly in her class, I was not, I had an A at the time, and that my grades were declining because I was dating that boy in the most dramatic, snarky southern accent you can imagine. Then she proceeds to tell my mom that she was raising a junkie and a <clears throat> easy girl and I would not amount to anything. My mom shot something equally snarky back, I cannot remember exactly what but she came to my defense swiftly and my teacher scurried off with a shocked look as my mom embarrassed her pretty severely. My parents were the type of parents that were pretty laid back, they knew I was not doing anything worse than what they did in college, I just started partying in high school, looking back maybe they were a bit too laid back, the rest of the school year was uncomfortable to say the least. I dreaded going to her class. She seemed to make my life miserable at every chance and now worked in insults about my mom too. I was really hurt and never forgot how mean she was. I did graduate the next year, went to college, worked for many years in government and then went back to school and got my PhD. I became a professor at the university in my high school town, I never ended up being a junkie or an easy girl however. Riding the elevator one morning to my office, guess who gets on with me? Yep, she was going to visit her husband who was a professor in another department in the same building. I was not going to say a thing, just stand there biting my tongue but she recognized me but cannot remember my name so I introduce myself and she exclaims, Oh, a Pfizer. Or a Pfizer, I'm not exactly sure. I cannot believe it, is it you? How are you? I gave a polite but cool response and she said in her same snarky tone, What are you doing here? I looked her dead in her eye and said, Going to my office. Your office? She replied, Oh, aren't you a funny one? I didn't say anything but when I got off the elevator I turned around, pointed down the hall to my office and said, Down the hall on the left. If you wanna drop by, ask for Dr. Pfizer. And I smiled the fakest smile, flipped her off and said, Good to see you returning the snarky attitude. Additional mildly amusing information, I worked with her husband a few times on various committees, he used to try to get me to go to dinner or out with him, I think just her knowing I was a professor was petty enough for me to feel gratified. Thanks for reading. And you know ripe stars that reminds me actually of a story of my own or rather of my family. My sister I think it was in high school she had a math teacher and this was a long time ago because my sister is much older than me. 
And this teacher told my sister that she will never see a university from the inside. Well guys, as it turns out, my sister now many many years later is a lawyer and that dude is still working a crappy job at a local small high school. Sometimes, at least in my opinion, the best revenge is when you are successful when other people would not expect you to be. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.